Hey, it's Chronologically Gaming, the only channel that's perpetually retro because we're playing every video game in order of release. Where's the number one place to find name brand video games at discount prices in the context of 1981? Right here on Chronologically Gaming. We last left off with Shooting Gallery. Let's press forward and see what our next game is. We're next going to the Commodore VIC-20, and this is Simple Simon. So we're going to Europe. For this one, the front of the box is pretty much all you get, and for additional apps, we have other versions. We have one that was in 1982 by Anarog, and then even one from the Netherlands. But the one we're going to be playing is from Audiogenic, and they're all the same. You'll see why. At some point in 1981, we got Simple Simon for the Commodore VIC-20. Yes. Pop in that cassette tape and go. So this is United Microware Industries presents Simon. Everyone take a guess, what game am I playing? Well, failing at the game, but it is, in fact, yes, Simon. It is it is simple as that. And there it goes. As far as all games we've ever played, as a handheld that we checked out, it was fantastic. For a computer, and we all know what all the computers can do at this point, this one is not the best game if you consider everything else we've seen. Especially if, if you have a Commodore VIC-20, think of all the games we've seen so far on this computer. They're fantastic. If you had Simon and that's all you had, and this is not a compilation. A lot of the games we see are sometimes in a compilation. No, this is just, this is just Simon. So I'm going to say of all the games we played, it is a one star. If you like Simon, I guess you could check it out. But for the other ones, no way. All right, let's see what our next game is. The next game is Skiing for the TRS-80 Color Computer. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, hey, wait a second, Mr. Arcade. We already checked out Skiing in January of 1981. Well, first of all, you got some nerve, mister. Second of all, yes, you would be correct. We've already played this in January of 1981, and the truth is the one we played was the cartridge version, as you can see down there, but we got the disc version, and the difference is you'll see in a sec. Take a look at the box for skiing. Behind the packaging, you can see everything else. They have this, like, um, uh, it's uh, covered over by something else uh, in, in the background. It looks great, though. Love it. And any other images we have for skiing? No, just some, if you want to clean up the ruddiness of the box, you can, but we don't want to do that here. We're not going to check out the manual because we played it before. So for other versions, we're going to play the disc version of skiing, released in January of 1981, or early, very early 1981. Let's check it out again on the disc. We're going to load through machine language or programmed with machine language. Here we go. Yes. By RG Kilgus or Robert. Way to go, Robert. All right, let's start this game and prepare to be amazed. When we first played this on cartridge, it was all black, which really is weird to play a skiing game that way, but check this out. Oh, yes. Now, if you're familiar with the controller or joystick for the Coco, it is analog. So whenever I'm playing this, it's a first-person skiing game. The disc version makes it all white, like snow, which is appropriate for skiing. But I am able to stop and slow down. And look at this. I'm moving around in a 3D space on a computer game. Blows my mind of all the uh, skiing games we played, and it plays so well with the joystick. It is fantastic. It feels good. It is the the most amazing graphically skiing game we've ever played. And the only other thing I can, time I can think of playing where you you feel like you're in a 3D space is Battle Zone in the arcade. It's it's a it's incredible. <laughs> And the, the idea that you can uh, back up, you can move the joystick back, slow down, and you can move back and forth, where it's not progressively just scrolling. You, you, you're controlling the screen as if you were there as a skier. It, it is monumental for the video games we've seen to this point. And I want to check it out with the white, the correct color palette in the background, because the black was, it was still good. But I mean, you're playing skiing, you got to have white, right? The only other thing I can think of when it comes to this game is we played another one on the Coco called Dino Wars that allowed you to move around with dinosaurs in a 3D space, like going, going forwards and backwards in the foreground. 
and this is another one of the how it's scaling on a very impressive level but uh, for 1981 this is awesome even if you don't like skiing or sports it's it's great now all we need is some relaxing music in the background it does feel very quiet on the slopes but look at that we're even going up and down look at the top of the hill oh yeah going down all the way and you go to the finish line <laughs> Yeah, the, 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 the scaling of the, the skiing game is amazing. Can't get enough of it. All right, so that was skiing for the TRS-80 color computer. Now, the, the rating still stands. Uh, this one's a four and a half star game, uh, well-deserved. There you go, skiing in the proper color palette. Now let's press forward and see what our next game is. We're going back to the Commodore VIC-20. This is the Sky is Falling. Let's take a look at the box for The Sky is Falling. Yes, on the VIC-20, the Friendly Computer. Oh, this is part of the Children's Fun series. That's great. And then we even have the the, the mascot of the Commodore VIC-20, since it's a cartridge. Plugs directly into your VIC-20 computer. Thank you, Mr. VIC-20. I don't know what his name is, whatever the mascot is. You don't have to be a computer expert to use the Commodore VIC-20, the Friendly Computer. All you do is insert this cartridge and turn it on. Yeah, even back in 1981. Now, why didn't they figure that out on IBM PCs? Because in 1992, uh, we were still having problems getting these games to load. And I'm, I'm amazed that the, the VIC-20 was that simple. All right, do we have anything else for The Sky is Falling? And nope, that's it. As far as artwork goes, for other versions, uh, we have alternate versions. And this is one of the first games we played with the paddle controller for the VIC-20. Let's check it out. Released at some point in 1981, here is The Sky is Falling by Commodore Business Machines. All right. Protect yourself from drops by catching them all. The rackets decrease as the game goes on. Serve button is one of the paddles. You can miss three times. All right, let's go. Push an F1 to start. And then we want to do one player. Looks like 10,000 points is the extra. Oh, look at that. Man, I love that paddle control feel. Oh my gosh, it really is an avalanche. I thought they were gonna do it like a cutesy, uh, something for, for the kids, but no, it's not. It, this feels like avalanche, it even sounds like avalanche. Why do they call it the sky is falling? Chicken Little doesn't even, I don't, I don't get it. You didn't need to use Chicken Little. Yeah, as always, man, the play control is so good. Oh yeah, now we go to the harder mode, they erase them. We only started with three bars though, usually they give us more than that. Oh man, yeah, and it's ramping it up quick, going on faster difficulty. We first saw this as Avalanche in the arcade by Atari, and then ripped off, sort of, by Activision with Kaboom on the Atari VCS. <laughs> oh my gosh, it sounds like an avalanche in hell. <laughs> for the kids this is supposed to be the kids series oh my gosh if it's the kids series this is the ultimate annoy your mom <laughs> game wow yeah and the difficulty oh this is intense yeah um i didn't even choose the difficulty but it, it it ramped up really quick game over i don't know if i can take the sound though that was crazy all right, so I was going to say uh, above average for the time, but the sound is, is why did they do that? I, I guess trying to make an homage to Avalanche, but I'll still say it's a very good time. Uh, if you had the paddle control for the Commodore VIC-20, uh, average for the typical games we've seen up to this point. So I'll say three, three stars. I would have said more if they did something different with the sound. Uh, it wasn't helpful. I guess if you, you could turn the volume down. All right, and with that, let's press forward and see what our next game is. It's time to go to the arcade, and this is Sky Skipper. Really looking forward to this one. Couldn't pin down the date for this one. That's why it's back here with the releases at some point in 1981. Let's take a look at the artwork, starting with the advertisement flyer. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Nintendo. Yes, developed by Research and Development 1. The front of the advertisement flyer is showing lots of stuff. We got the cards, like it's going to be a, a card or using the suits of cards with a king, a queen, and we have a, a monkey. There is a, a, a another gorilla that is not Donkey Kong in the same year as Donkey Kong. I got to find out that gorilla's name. 
looks like we'll be in the biplane and um in the back it's uh, the one we're gonna be playing is in japan that's why everything's in japanese so like the other advertisement flyers in the back it's giving us instructions but we're not going to be able to understand them unless you uh, can read japanese and then we have different arcade cabinets we can check out this is kind of cool because um you can see a little bit on this screenshot the game itself is using multiple levels of plexiglass to give you an even more authentic 3D feel to it. You can kind of see it here. They black it out here, but this is the actual arcade cabinet. There's two different ones because it was released in North America later, but I know for 1981, that was the first release in Japan. And there's our arcade PCB. If you're a really technical person and you look at the PCB, this is very similar to the PCB as Popeye whenever we see it in 1982. And we'll be able to tell by the resolution. For controls, it's a eight-way joystick. We can move all around. And then we have Accelerate and Bomb with our ship. And there's our arcade marquee for Sky Skipper. Cool. All right, we have no manual for this one. Let's go to Japan and play the latest by Nintendo, Sky Skipper in the arcades. Research and Development 1. Yeah, there we go. Starring Mr. Yu. <laughs> Wonder Kingdom is conquered by gorillas. Drop bombs on the gorillas and knock them down. Touch and rescue all the king's family by plane. So the attract mode's giving us some instructions of how to play in English. Thanks. And for the attract mode, it's going to show you how this works. Take a look at the resolution. This is one of the uh, most technically impressive video games we've played thus far on the channel. Uh, the resolution for the sprites is higher than what we've seen, and uh, it, Nintendo is pushing the limits on also the way it scrolls around, because um, you're able to move, uh, I think it's going to show diagonally too. It doesn't just go uh, horizontally left and right. But yeah, the gorillas, what are the gorillas wearing headphones? <laughs> they look more charming than Donkey Kong. Wow, look at all the stars on the screen, oh my gosh. Uh, good point. I just saw the chat about the PCB. I'm not too sure on that one. All right, give us the story again. Starring Mr. Yu, co-starring the King's family. Guest star. Oh, he doesn't have a name. His name's just Gorilla. Poor guy. He didn't get a name like Donkey Kong. Touch and rescue all the King's family by plane. See you again at the airport. Same suit, same color, four suit. So if you play like you're playing a deck of cards, uh, you get more points by the, the, people, the, the people you pick up. And you're picking up uh, diamonds, clubs hearts and spades. All right, let's put a coin in and play some Sky Skipper, a very rare, hard to come by arcade game. Nice, and Nintendo's got some, uh, a little ditty in the beginning, love it. All right, so for controls, yes, you, you notice how I can move. It is able to scroll, wow, all the way up here in the sky, nice. You have um, bombs you can uh, lay down against the gorillas and it should, when I hit the gorilla, pop the... <laughs> Yeah, there we go. And you start collecting the suits at the top of the screen. But the, the most impressive thing is the resolution of the sprites. <laughs> Even the gorillas can shoot up there. And that it's scrolling uh, not just top down or side to side. It's scrolling with uh, diagonally too. Let's see if we can get the king. Go, go, go. And let's get another one here. I didn't see the full way to collect the uh, suits. I want to see if I can collect all of it, and then make it back to the runway again. So let's go fast. Let's go to the left. Let's go get a diamond. See if we get every suit. What's that one get us? And then we go back here. Got to do a nice landing. Yeah! And then they rack up the points, whatever you pick up. It still feels like we're playing in a small, enclosed area. I know it has the sky up above, but it doesn't give us... Um, <laughs> you go too high. Did I run out of fuel? I think I did. If you go too high, then uh, it seems like there's two walls on either side. Not not like you're playing with a, um, a, a wide expanse. Like when you play Scramble and it keeps scrolling horizontally, it feels like there's more and more to check out. <laughs> All right. Oh, we already got enough suits. Okay, let's go back. Oh, we... and they have these symbols. <laughs> yeah, if you use the the boost too long then your fuel runs out and you crash but with fantastic fashion all the stars everywhere <laughs> all right add that to the public domain of the music we heard skip to my loo just played all right so can we get down there i don't think so 
Oh, it was me. I was the one that crashed. It wasn't because of loss of fuel. It's because whenever I, uh, whenever you dip your plane down too fast, you just, you just die. So we got the Spade Heart Dia and Club, or Diamond and Club. Starring Mr. Yu. All right, Wonder King was conquered by gorillas. Same suit is 400 points, so that's what we want to go for. I was thinking they were going to go for a card flare. We pick up different suits, maybe get uh, two pair or something of that nature, but no, it's not, like, not that. All right, let's put another coin in. We got a lot of quarters. We're here to play in Japan and push and start. That's too bad about the gorilla, though. I really want him to have a name. Like, there's a long-lost Donkey Kong friend out there that he hasn't seen before. All right, so if I collect all four of these and go back, that should be it, right? No! Whoa, I barely made it through that one. And then points. Yeah, they're keeping track of the, t the left side. Now, how do I get back to get fuel, if any? Wow, yeah, the animation and sprite work is fantastic. <laughs> I just saw the princess. Alright, so let's get back to the other side. I think... No, don't hit me! <laughs> they also... And Nintendo did something that's not as popular. The, the plane we're firing is dropping bombs, which is kind of like a blitz kind of game, instead of the usual firing forward, like we've seen with uh, Scramble and Super Cobra. Or any other shooter, for that matter. Alright, so is this just replace the other ones? Okay, I think it does. Right, let's hurry back. Oh! <laughs> it has to be cool physics on the plane. You actually can't just fly um, uh, fly all willy-nilly all over the place. Y you actually have to uh, pay attention to the front of the plane, the nose, and it, it, it's affected by gravity. But it is a relative control, so as I move around, as I move around, if I go left, it goes left. I go, if I go right, it goes right. So it's, it's very easy to control. All right, let's see if we can get it this time. Let's go down and get those diamonds. There we go. I don't know how I got past him. Okay, let's see if we can make it. Where was the landing section? I think it's only back here. So we'll go to the right again. The reason I said this one was hard to come by is because this is one of those games that Nintendo didn't put... <laughs> Darn didn't put in other places because uh, Donkey Kong which you saw this year is very popular we've seen all over the place but Sky Skipper no we didn't get uh, a lot of ports the only other uh, ones were on the Atari VCS which is kind of cool that Atari was the one and it wasn't put on uh, their systems so this is a real treat to check out and play alright so if we can get back to the runway please let me make it <laughs> I guess that wasn't the runway <laughs> I think I'm landing as carefully as possible, but nope. Oh, that's awesome. Because um, I know Nintendo's been releasing a lot of stuff that was from the past, so that's great to hear. All right, we got enough money. Let's put one more coin in and go again with Sky Skipper. There we go. So did that count? Oh, are you supposed to collect everybody? And so by the time you get to the other side, okay, you, maybe you're supposed to be able to, the only way you can get to the next level or the next stage is after you collect everything. Oh, darn, and that was just poor flying skills. Sorry, buddy. It's Mr. You. Looks just like me. Alright, I gotta get him this time. Is he still in his cage? Okay, so you gotta bust him out. How do you bust him out, you ask? You gotta smash the gorilla on the head, and then they get bust out of the cage. Makes perfect sense. Alright, so this time I'm just going to go for full out, let's destroy everything. 
Let him out. There you go. Got him. And then get these guys too. And it's telling me East End is where I need to go. <laughs> okay, all down here looks good. Keep going. Let's see, we got Princess up here. Oh, she's back. She's back in the cage. Okay. Bust her out. Get that. Yes, get it. No, I want this hard too quick. All right, there we go. So we picked up everything. Yeah, bonus. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> That's right, a Nintendo game, and the, the, the gorilla says, Damn it, I'll escape. <laughs> I guess before Nintendo started censoring everything. <laughs> oh, we get a whole new level, too? Oh, this is so cool. Yeah, and you're just collecting as much as you can. You get the bonus, I guess, every time you collect uh, a certain amount. Let's get that king out. Where is it? Come on, pop out. Why isn't the king coming out? Oh, I'll take care of that guy right there. And right here. <laughs> All right, now I really want to know who is, or what's the name of the gorilla? And is he related to King Kong? All right, we'll grab some fuel. Fuel at the top bar. This this game doesn't feel as stressful about fuel as Scramble or Super Cobra. Like, it doesn't feel like I'm going to be running out or I have to get fuel. It's, it's like, more relaxed, which is nice. Okay, gotta be careful here. Easy. Can I get you? No, I can't believe I missed him. Okay, so we gotta st stumble back this way. <laughs> oh, darn! Every time you turn left and right, your ship or your plane goes up just a little bit. Get ready. Last plane. Here it is. <laughs> yeah, maybe they went uh, off too... Nintendo went too far off the deep end and then had to pull themselves back. Okay, we need to stop saying damn it in video games. We heard there's a bunch of kids that play these. Wow, what a shot! <laughs> there you go. Game over. Man, of all the games we played of so far, Sky Skipper is hitting lots of marks. Um, the uh, sprite resolution, the gameplay, scrolling in multiple directions, lots of fun, comical. It's almost like I'm playing a long lost Nintendo game because there's no, other, there's not a lot of ports that you can play on it. But for 1981, considering we've just played Donkey Kong and it is following a, a, a trope of shooting formula, I'm still going to say five stars. It is one of the best games you could play at this point. Uh, a real treat to the eyes. Five stars for Sky Skipper. And with that, let's press forward and see our next game. Where are we going now? All right, we're going back to the TRS-80 color computer, and this is Slash Ball. We don't have a box for this one, just a few screenshots. So let's just hop in and play some Slash Ball. Released in 1981. <laughs> All right, what are we loading this time? Going in basic. What is Slash Ball? Do you need instructions? Yes, yes we do. Slash Ball, a ball is going to appear moving up on the screen. Use this key and that key. Okay, got it. And Z, ready for more? Yeah, I'm ready for more. Are you thirsty for more? The ball will bounce off the barrier in a natural manner. Which way it, de which way it bounces depends on the type of barrier and which direction it hits from. The Slash will stay and help or hinder the next player. Oh, the next time you play, I guess. The object is hit the center target. You get 16 minus the number of slashes you have used. Ready for more? Luck shots don't count. <laughs> okay, if the ball hits the target before you place the last slash, you can serve again. The more difficult you make it, the less time you'll have to score. S serves the ball. Ready? How do you want it? <laughs> One to nine. We'll try three. All right, we're in. Set slash ball. We're serving. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to do put up a pat. Oh, okay. It's very similar to a game we played on the Commodore uh, VIC-20. This is Deflect. But uh, which one came first? I'm sure someone in the comments is going to tell me, because it could have been either one. And I'm doing terrible right now, because now that I realize what the game is, I'm probably going to put myself in a, a really bad position. Yep. <laughs> I want to start over now. Can I please start over? <laughs> so it's almost like we're playing a puzzle game a, or a bouncing puzzle game. <laughs> it's, it's 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 just bringing my score down because we've messed up so many times. Yeah. So I put myself in a a, a rather bad position. 
but I love the idea. Really nice. I thought Jeff Minter was the one that brought this up. Whoa! Player one <laughs> wins with, with a terrible score. Do you want to start again? Yes, we do. Do you need instructions? No. How do you want it? Let's try one this time instead of three. Okay, here we go. So serve it up. And starting off, let's go heading... Oh, wrong direction. So that that's to my... So that's to the right. Got it. There you go. So you try to get it to the barrier in the middle and then serve it up again. So we now can use those or they may hurt us later on. So let's go that way. And then that way. Nope, I went the wrong one. Go. <laughs> no, I'm going to do it again. So you get the formula, how the game works. You're putting paddles to direct the, the ball to deflect in different ways. Oh, this isn't going to be good. No, I give up. I concede. <laughs> oh, thank you very much for the date, L. Curtis B. And we're going to be going really hard with the dates in 1982 to get them as close as we can to get a really good capture of the video games in 1982. No, no more will we have games struggling for the end. Well, some. If people can tell me when the Exidy Sorcerer games were released or when the uh, Creative Vision games were released, that'd be a big help because those are those are mysteries. <gasps> Whoa! Player one wins. Okay, we'll go one more time. Just because it's a really cool idea for puzzle game. No, we don't want instructions. How do we want it? Let's go two this time. We gotta be masters by now, right? All right, serve it up. Here we go. So the way it's gonna deflect is... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I keep getting it mixed up for the way it's going to go. Okay, so if I wanted to come back, go that way. There you go. <laughs> and serve it up. There we go. Doing better that time. Yeah, so it's just like Deflect. Uh, great game concept. Really fun for the time um, and simple too. So um, for the, t the for the games we played up to this point, I'd say uh, for the idea, it's it's still slightly above average, just like Deflect. Uh, for the life of me, I can't remember the exact rating we gave Deflect. It was a little simpler. This one has a slightly better presentation on the Coco, but I'll still say um, three and a half stars. It's pr it's pretty cool. All right, that was Slash Ball. Let's see what our next game is. We're now going to the Atari home computer. And this is Sleazy Adventure. How sleazy? Well, we'll, we'll see. We have a manual for this one, even though we don't have a box. This one's by APX, Atari Program Exchange, by Bob Smith. Oh, there's a date. It says March 1982. Oh, okay. So this is whenever it was published by APX. So it was, it was ready or be able to play it earlier than 1982. And that's probably why we're checking out in 81. But uh, when APX got it and published it, it was 82. Gotcha. Okay, so it has discs, requires 32k of RAM to play this. All right, what kind of game is it? Let's see if the manual tells anything about what it is. The game overview. You're really into sailing. Not only do you spend all your spare time sanding, painting the hull of your 30-foot sloop, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's a story, like a text adventure game. Sleazy Adventure. Oh, I see. It's got to be a text adventure game. Belongs to a family game called family of games called Adventure Games. These are maze games in which descriptions of your current surroundings display on your video screen. The game uses text only, no sound, motion, color, or graphics. Doesn't that sound fun? Let's go check out Sleazy Adventure that has no sound, motion, color, or graphics. So they also describe it as a maze game. That's really bizarre. All right, how do we get started? Let's go to the next part because we can load it all by ourselves. You'll see Welcome to Adventure, followed by a description of your locale and a summary. Press Return and the adventure begins. You're determined to get to this trip alive and come out richer. You better start looking around for lucrative contraband before locating the boat. The reason they call this game Sleazy Adventure is because I think there's drug use involved. You know how the other adventure games we played, like Colossal Cave, you go find a treasure and then come back and it has a fantasy theme? Not here. This one, you're going to find drugs and bring drugs back to your boat. Once you're on the boat, you land orient, uh, land orient commands get you nowhere. Instead, oh, you have commands for on the boat. Okay. And yes, you probably need to draw a map for everything. You'll encounter things like fat flashlights. You'll have to say words like take flashlight, read map. So it's a two-word text parser, it looks like. If you're stumped, though, you can use hint or help. Okay, so they might even give us hints. That's good. And then there's score. The When you get back to the, the back to the end with the most drugs or contraband, I think that's what they call it, then you get the higher points. And then how to restart and replay the game. Oh, the verb list. There we go. They give us some of the stuff. Kind of limited. That can't be all the verbs. I hope not. 
And then for movement, you can see we got uh, on land or on a ship, and then the other commands, L. Oh, instead of look, you just type L, and then I for inventory. Got it. Everybody got it? All right. Let's go. Looks like the other versions are alternate and basic. We're popping in and playing Sleazy Adventure. Released at some point in 1981 for the Atari home computer. <laughs> 32K, right? Yeah, the only more we've seen is the Apple II. For RAM, but the the Atari, um, I'd be curious to know the price difference with RAM on the Atari compared to Apple's. Here we go. Welcome to Sleazy Adventure. A friend of yours just bought a sailboat and it's in Thailand. You agree to sail it back knowing you can use it to import contraband. You move by typing those directions. Remember, the more valuables you take, the greater the risk. You can obtain more help by typing help or hint. Good luck. All right, we are now pros of text adventure here on Chronologically Gaming. You're in the airport of Bangkok International with only a passport. You wonder why you came. So if I type L, what does it say? The exact same thing. Wait, wait, uh, with pa a passport. So if I do I, I'm carrying nothing. Oh, I thought I had a passport. <laughs> I guess I had nothing. Okay, so let's go south. Can I go south? We're in the marketplace. The Exotica, strange smells, bad water, they're all here. The crossroads of Thailand. Eastward lies open land. West of you is the steamy backside of Bangkok. An elephant tromps by holding a huge teak log in his trunk. Take log. Take what? <laughs> the log in his trunk. Why don't you understand me? The backside of Bangkok, elephant tromps by. Uh, kill... Elephant. I always try random text things to see. Oh, of course it doesn't understand. We are getting a slight lag. Lag really isn't a term they use in 1981. But, you know, you type your command and then it waits a little bit. I want instantaneous. We played on the IBM PC. And on the uh, Atari computer. And it's been faster than this. All right. So, I guess we keep going south. Uh, unless I say, what, in the marketplace? Do I have anything else to look at? No open land. Uh, yeah, I will go east now. We're at rice paddies. Oh, man. Yeah, so it's it's a larger world, slightly, so you have to make a map. You're up to your ankles in mire. The paddies continue for miles and miles. Okay, go back west, back to the marketplace. Oh, and we got to say look again for a display. Yeah, okay. So let's go east again. Oh, I'm sorry, go west. Now go west again. Now we're in the alley, off the beaten track. The only tourists here are the ones looking for sordid entertainment. Well, like what? Entertainment. Oh, it's Bangkok. Ugh. You can even smell the STDs. So if we go west again, if we're in the alley, we went west. Let's keep going west. Yep, it's all here. Open gutter, starving dogs, nightly killings. Oh, we might die as a drifter in Thailand. First time we've ever had experienced that in a video game. Can we keep going west? Backstage. All that's here are half-dressed females and midgets selling drugs. Talk midget. I don't understand that. The, the game is telling me words, and then I say the words back, and it doesn't understand. That's always frustrating with text adventure games. My goodness. All right, so can we look? All that's here. Okay, keep going west, then. You can't go that way. Okay, go south. Can't go that way. Go north. Sleazy nightclub. Amidst the din and blue smoke... A pervert in feathers makes crude offers in your ear. Oh, gosh. So uh, that means we're supposed to get... Con Wait, what's the hint? Hint. Rumor has it this person is the sole distributor for maps of the forest. Humor it. Okay, so the uh, guy in the corner, we're supposed to get the map from him. This is a completely different text adventure game than any other video game we played before. And it's funny how we went from a Nintendo game to a sleazy adventure. Okay, so can we buy? Buy drugs! Oh, and, man, you type it wrong? Yeah, I know, you don't understand. Buy drugs. Ah, oh, you don't understand buying drugs. Uh, what about talk? Talk man. Talk man? How do you talk to him? Uh, look again? D -d 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 crude offers? Uh, listen, I guess? Oh, you know what? We need the verb list. To know what to type. Yeah, type help. <laughs> what is take key, drop, move, eat, read, sell, turn on, turn off, take balloon, take what, and then the commands for your boat. But we're not going to even get in the boat yet. Move, drop, eat, read, 
So it's really simple object verb form. They have more? No, that's it. Okay, so look again. So they don't have a, so let's do just talk. Oh my gosh, talk, talk pervert. Okay, good, I'm so glad you don't understand that. And we're being recorded right now, so of all the video games we ever played, it's kind of like you don't expect to say something for the uh, for, for the show. You never expect that for, and it always comes up in text adventure games. Always text adventure games. All right, well, of all the games we played up to this point, uh, that was pretty sleazy. We just didn't get the map. We couldn't get our drugs. It's too bad. But another game that uh, is trying something that's never been done before. Uh, we have already played uh, for controversial video games, Streaking in the Arcades. And the other one that's coming up soon, I won't tell you when, but we'll see when we, you'll see when we get there. This one's up similar alley, kind of close to that. But for all the games we've seen up to this point, it still isn't impressive from a text adventure standpoint. Uh, it's pretty cool that they have two different controls for being on a boat or being on land. And uh, it makes you want to play more because you're like, oh, I, I can go sell drugs or go find drugs. And rather than be in a fantasy world where you're getting treasure, you can go get drugs and bring them back. It, so uh, cool concept. Uh, so because of that, we'll say it's slightly above average. Uh, it's it's a game that's doing something different, but the text parser really wasn't impressive. So we'll say three and a half stars for Sleazy Adventure. And with that, let's press forward and see what our next game is. It's now time for the handhelds, and this is Sleepwalker by VTech. And if we take a look at the box, this is the European box, I think French, yes. As they call it, and not Sleepwalker, Insomni by Ludotronic. Flip it over on the back. They're giving explanations in French of how the game works. This one has four buttons, two on each side, compared to the other ones we've seen. Any other artwork we have for Sleepwalker? Nope, nothing else there. All right, let's put the palm of our hands. Sleepwalker, released at some point in 1981 by VTech. Check it out. Here we go. Let's go game A, or Ju A. There we go, the handheld I expected. Now I got, I'm just gonna mess around with the, the buttons here. I got two buttons on the left, two buttons on the right. And it looks like I am a man? What am I doing? Oh, interesting. Okay, so the, the four buttons are four different places. If you move to the top right, that's me moving a skateboard out of the way because the other characters are sleepwalking. Sweet, so if I, I need to follow him and make a platform for him to cross and then come back to the left, Move the skateboard out of the way, because if they're sleepwalking, they're going to slip on the skateboard. So cool. So what's that? A cat? And then that's moving a... Oh, that's moving a rake out of the way. It's so funny. Okay, I get it. I get it now. So you use the four different buttons to move in four different places, and you're trying to get the sleepwalkers to be safe. Oh, and he got attacked by the cat. <laughs> got it. Nice. That's a great idea. We haven't seen this yet where it's um, characters moving in the background and you're supposed to help them avoid things. It, it's the same formula on the LCD screen, but for handheld, it works really well. Cool idea. But it, it's similar thing. You're, you're just moving around and it progressively adds more and more people. <laughs> but protecting the sleepwalkers, cool idea. Let's try game B. How crazy hard is it going to be now? So move the skateboard out of the way, and you get a point for that one. Help them across the platform. Move the cat. I guess we're, it looks like we're dusting. I can't tell too well. But yeah, move the rake out of the way, get the skateboard. This one, those two guys. Yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, that's tricky. It is, oh, I would say a little more difficult. It's not as um, monotonous as other uh, handheld games. It is still ripping off Nintendo Game & Watch, but yeah, cool. And I get it, just like all, all handhelds, eventually. All right, so that's Sleepwalker. Of all the handhelds we've played, yeah, it's pretty good. I, I, I like that formula. Uh, it is not up to snuff with the ones we've seen up in Milton Bradley Microvision or the Intex Selecta game with the interchangeable cartridges, but I still say it's a very good uh, handheld for the time. Um, yeah, I, I'd say it's a four-star handheld game. Of all the other games we played on handhelds, that's pretty good. So four stars for Sleepwalker. All right, let's see what our next game is. Where are we going now? We're going back to the Atari home computer, and this is Slip. Part of a compilation, Super Cubes and Slip. So we'll see Super Cubes later. This is Slip. Let's take a look at the box first. 
combined together. Oh, we're going to England. Uh, this box is by, I believe, yeah, Thorn EMI. And flip it over on the back. Yeah, there we go. Doing the grid design way before the Sega Master System did. So slip lets you in your it lets you compete against the computer or against a friend. The idea is to get the balls into the holes by tilting the maze. Sounds pretty easy, but just try one of the higher levels of difficulty. Another way of competing in both games is to see you can compete the fastest using the computer stopwatch. It says over 300 game variations for this, maybe with both of them together. But this is kind of cool. The box at the bottom left has it shows you the joystick because you get to plug in your Atari VCS, and then it says if it uses basic or not. You need 16K, so that's kind of cool. It's like a preview of computer boxes giving you the heads up of what you need with little picture diagrams. I dig it. Any other artwork we have for Super Cubes and Slip? Well, we have the advertisement flyer, along with Figure Fun, which I don't believe we're going to check that out because it's a, a educational title. But, uh, possibly. And we have a manual too, Super Cubes and Slip. Let's see what Slip's all about. The tantalizing maze game. Tilt the board to maneuver balls around corners and into the holes. You tilt it the other way and the potted ball jumps out again. Compete against the clock or against an opponent. All right, doesn't sound super fun, but let's see how to play it. How do you play slip? After the title, it's going to ask you if you want to do one or two players. Okay, how do you select everything? Game board appears immediately. A stopwatch starts, starts in the, above the board. With one player, you have a joystick. You get to use the Atari one and then move it around. And it looks like you're moving the board around. Okay, so is this like a digital version of one of those little handhelds, uh, um, handheld toys that has the silver ball bearing and you move that around? Is that what we're going to play? Let's find out. Released at some point in 1981, this is Slip by Thorn EMI at some point in 1981. Gotta love the sound for the Atari home computer. Alright, so how many players we want to do? One. Skill level, we'll start with two right now. And then speed, let's just do one. Continuous movement, sure, say yes. All right, ready, and go. Okay, we're in. How do we do it? Oh, okay, okay, so I am using the Atari joystick, and you move it to the left, and all the balls move to the left. You move it to the right, everything moves to the right. And what you have to do is get everything to go into the hole around the outside. So you can see it bounced one of them out. Let's see if I can still get it in. Okay, that one stayed. But then now I got to get these two all the way around. And it is one of those little handheld toys. That's what we're playing. <laughs> the kind of ones you just roll around till you get the, the balls going the, the, the place they need to. Oh, man. Yeah, it's tricky, though. As the other ones were. So converting something that we're kind of familiar with is an interesting idea. And looks like they're going to bounce off if I go there. Quickly, quickly, hurry. No, no, go back. And got it. Yes! Where's my victory screen? Do I get anything? Hello? Hello? We have to go back to the main menu, I guess. Yeah, but that's pretty much it. They have different difficulty levels. I want to see if it gives us something bigger, but I, uh, I'd say that's pretty much the idea of the game. So this is a two-parter. We're splitting it up, uh, Super Cubes and Slip. But uh, I'd still say for the time, it's all right, uh, considering the games. It's not necessarily using real physics. You can see it was uh, like tile-based for the ball bearing. So I'd still say of all the games we played, it's subpar if you were just playing Slip. Uh, it, it's all right for the time. I'd say two and a half stars. And with that, let's press forward and see what our next game is. Here we go. It's time to play some Apple II, and this is Snack Attack. Let's start with the box for Snack Attack. We saw this one in Softline Magazine. Finally getting to check it out. Bet you can't play just one game. 30 bucks at the time. Yikes. How much RAM does this one take? Does it say here on the front? No, not there. All right, let's flip it over in the back. <laughs> nope. Datamos doesn't tell us anything. Any other artwork we have for Snack Attack? We have the inside leaflet, which looks kind of like the manual, and then that's it. So we'll uh, open the leaflet up and check it out. So this is by Dan Ilowski. Way to go, Dan. You've got it again. First that empty feeling, then pangs. Finally, you feel it. Grr, you're having a snack attack. Your only hope to, of relief is gobble up as many gumdrops as you can grab away from the greedy gumdrop guards. The gumdrop guards control three mazes stocked full of gumdrops. 
To advance one maze to the next, you must eat all the gumdrops in your maze, but beware. In normal state, contact with any of the four colored guards will cause you to explode. I feel like I'm reading another Pac-Man variant. Yes, it's mazes, yes. Random times, a special dessert will pop up in the maze. Just like cherries. Or, uh, pretzels. Once you've eaten all this left, the guards at their feet will scurry to a regener re regeneration chamber where they slowly grow new bodies. <laughs> we played so many Pac-Man variants, and they keep describing them different ways. But uh, eating snacks is one we've seen before, too. As you start the game, you have three snacks or whales available. Additional whales become available. Oh, wait, are we a whale? Is that who we're playing as? Where's a picture of us? Does it have one? I don't... Oh, we are a whale! We're playing as a whale in the game? Okay, so... Far from Pac-Man. Can't be even Pac-Man. To control the snackers or whales movement, you have three options. You can use the keyboard or joystick. Yes, option three. That's the way to go. To excel as a snacker and rack up big scores, you want to develop various strategies around the individual personalities of the guards, kind of like the ghosts, and arrange the pathways, doors, stars, and desserts in each of the three mazes. Happy snacking. That's pretty fun. All right, let's uh, slide the disc in and pull some snack attack, released at some point in 1981 for your Apple II. I know it was really popular in 1982. The very first time you could play it was 1981. There we go, Snack Attack. Oh, you get music. All right. <laughs> Eat the gumdrops in the maze. There's our gumdrop guards. We're the snacker. It looks nothing like a whale. Gumdrop guards, we got uh, extra snacker at 4,000 points. I love how it says, press something to start. Just something. So I have my joystick and it worked. I pressed something on the joystick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are aware. Look, look at the animation on that. That's awesome. Very colorful for the Apple II. That's amazing. Usually we don't get this on the Apple II. Now, how can I tell if... <laughs> I can't really tell if I'm able to eat these guys. It's just based on the sound, I guess. But uh, you rip off their, their bodies and their teeth just bounce around. That's funny. All right, is this going to chase me? Yep, he's going. Let's see if they take the bait. Yes. Yeah, it's based on sound. I can't tell the difference. Oh, and he got a pumpkin to eat. Go, go, go. We're supposed to be eating gumdrops. That's another way to put it. Uh, people took the Pac-Man maze game and turned it into haunted, like, because this has ghosts. And then also turned it into, Pac-Man really eats a lot, so let's make it candy. Oh, yeah. There we go. He's munching really close to the animation of Pac-Man. But it's it's really impressive animation for the Apple II. Let's go. And another one's coming out. Got him. Let's see if we can get... Now, how do we get past the walls? Oh, we eat through. Okay, are we safe in here? Let's see if we can... Or we'll just move on to the next maze, which is... A different maze. Cool, okay. Yeah, it says maze number two, so I wonder if it's going to randomize the maze for us. Always a plus for a Pac-Man variant. I love it. When we It was advertised in uh, Softline. We've been playing the magazines, or playing the magazines, we've been showcasing the magazines on the channel, and as we showcase the magazines... I'll read and see games that I've never heard of before and then look up and find that it's uh, it, it's a game not in most compilations or uh, ways that you can get the, get these games and I have to find someone's private reserves or a, a, a way that they have it's someone that's preserved the game and, and then play it like this one snack attack is one that is not uh, easy to come by oh yeah here we go can we go through this side nice so are we just in a safe zone if we go there? That's a cool idea. So you have a place that the the gumdrop guards can't get to. And I believe I got one more pellet. Don't think. Oh, that counted as a touch. Okay. <laughs> They're creatively using the sound of the Apple II. Like the, the sound effect for picking up the gumdrops is pretty good. Was that our last life? Okay, we still got one more. There we go. Next maze is a spiral. Nice. Okay, we won't go for that one. That's really clever. Really fun. And the the, the very first Pac-Man had the same maze every time. 
we're going to see 1982 when Miss Pac-Man shows up. It is the official, sort of not official, uh, sequel to Pac-Man. And whenever the... Uh, oh, we can't go through the pur purple barriers. Okay. And Mrs. Pac-Man adds different mazes to play. And we've already seen, with so many variants, we've seen lots of uh, games that take the formula and change up the mazes. Like this one. So it makes you want to continue to play further and further to see what the next maze is going to be. You going to come for me? Come on. Come down here. Take the bait. So we got one more pellet at the top. Now I can't go through that one. Let's see if we can go this way. And I bet the red's going to beeline for me. Yep, he's coming. He's coming. Oh, and they got me there. Is that the game over? Yeah, there you go. Nice. Oh, they speed up the... Wow, so they can move that fast. That means whenever we go further and further, I bet it's going to get faster and faster and faster as you play. That's awesome. Wow. So it starts off on the same maze one. Oh, yeah, that's that's a blast to play farther and farther, see how far the mazes go. Pretty cool. Okay, so for all the games we played up to this point, um, it's not giving you variations from the middle, but it feels like you're playing an, an authentic arcade game on the Apple II. Color is ex extremely done uh, done really well for the Apple II. I'm, I'm going to say four stars for sure. Anybody in the chat want to help out and see if this would be even higher? Should this be one of the best games you've ever played uh, from 1981, or we just keep it at four? I'm, I'm satisfied with four, but I could probably go four and a half because uh, Pac-Man still... Uh, it, it's, it's one of the best things you could play, at least the idea nowadays. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, four stars... We'll take it. Going for... All right, after Snack Attack, let's see what our next game is. Yeah, okay, from one uh, Pac-Man variant to another, this is Snackman? Snackman. Snackman on the Commodore VIC-20. We have no information for this one, uh, just a few screenshots, and this is Micro Digital that does this one. All right, let's pop in and play some Snackman. Released at some point in 1981, and we're going to England for this one. There we go. It shows you the difference between two different computers. Apple II, I would say, uh, sh sh has the edge, or at least people are more familiar with programming on that one. But uh, how do we go? Joystick works? It does. Yep, there we go. The biggest difference is how this is tile-based. Every time you move, you can tell Pac-Man doesn't have as much animation as what we saw before. And then, how do I know I can pick them up? Oh, I guess when they're white. Whoa, you, ha you don't have a lot of free time, though. Look at this. When I... I can, I can go inside and kill them just over and over again. Okay, I gotta do that now. Let's go back in. Take them out, and then just go get them again and again. Yes, look at this. Can I just keep... <laughs> just keep racking up the points? I think they should have playtested this a little bit more. Yeah, simpler version, uh, but, 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 but still fun for the time. Am I out of power pellets already? I am. Uh-oh, not good. Let's go around this side. And I'm also not seeing a lot of intelligence with the ghosts. They feel pretty random. That's something else I noticed with Snack Attack. It, it was done really well with the um, the way the ghosts were behaving. Like, they knew in Pac-Man each ghost was programmed differently. So, nice touch there. Yeah, see, I'm able to make this... I shouldn't be able to get this easy. Nice. So there you go. Fun for the time. That's Snackman for the Commodore VIC-20. Of all the games we played up to this point, it's it's okay. It's not like uh, something that'd be a really uh, an exceptional game for the time uh, because of the frame rate and uh, the simplicity of it. I, I'd still say it's average. It's a three-star game considering the other games we played thus far. Very still enjoyable. And by the way, the three-star rating, it's like uh, the, the typical game of w that era, or what we're playing of. Uh, the, the, the vintage of 1981, it's, it's, it's kind of the normal. So it's not a bash on a game if it's three stars. Three stars is like the, the, the huge. All right, so with that, let's press forward and see what our next game is. We are rocking and rolling through 1981, and this is Snapjack in the arcade. Let's check out Snapjack, starting with the Advertisement Flyer. Another one by Universal. Oh, wow. Love the Advertisement Flyer. Colors are popping. Two different arcade cabinets there, and the one we're going to be checking out is in Japan first, 1981, and then released elsewhere next year. 
So we're going to Japan again. We flip it over on the back. Yeah, this is the advertisement flyer that came in other regions. And actually, it still says 1981 at the bottom. So maybe it was in other regions in early 1981. So how do you play? You work the control level lever up, down, and speed. Your car eats the dots on the course. The enemy Medusa Jack will attack your car, dodge it, and try to make headway. When 20 dots have been eaten, a brilliant power dot appears. It's also eaten. The car increases its power. Now it's able to eat the enemy since, since it's become invincible, except when it runs against the rock. There's a jump board at the end of each course. Have your car jump successfully so it does not run against the gondola above. If it cannot jump high enough, it cannot creep the marsh eaten by the dragon. Whoa, does everyone feel like I'm just explaining a dream I had? That, that was the most bizarre instructions I've ever heard of. I want to see what this game is like. It says score, what we're going to get for scoring everything. There's the example of the arcade cabinet and the control panel. Looks like we got eight-way joystick and that's it. The only buttons are one and two players, so that's that's all we got. <laughs> all right so yeah that's it no no buttons to push you just move around so arcade marquee man it's killing with the artwork loving snapjack's artwork it's awesome no manual for this one we're going to the arcades let's go to japan and play snapjack released at some point in 1981 really excited for this so cool okay let's see what the attract mode has so awesome it's uh horizontally scrolling like it's a scramble, but it is eating dots like Pac-Man. Wow. I want to be there for the focus group at Universal. We need to do a video game. Quick, give us some ideas. How about we blend a game that combines Pac-Man and Scramble, which are the two hottest games right now, the shooter or space shooter and Pac-Man. Wow. So cool. All right, I want to go. Let's put a coin in and push and start. Control's got to be simple. Yeah, so eight-way joystick feels really good to move around, but that's all you got. The joystick moves, you pick up all the dots, and I guess I'm just avoiding... Oh, until I push the power pellet, and now I can kill enemies, and there's letters popping up. I wonder if I can spell... Oh, do we go out, already out of the bonus mode? That was really fast. Wow, okay, we got fire flying at us. They just threw everything at this game. Why have I never heard of Snapjack? It, it, it was in other regions, but uh, this is amazing. Blending. <laughs> Whoa, and we got large sprites too. Okay. Wow, this is pretty awesome. Can we get the extra? So if you get enough of the letters and spell extra... Got it. Bonus mode is timed. Oh yeah, it's frantic. It's fast. Alright, what do I do for jump? I don't have a button. How do I jump? I don't know. Oh, what? Okay, yeah, it's just using the joystick. You just move it around and time it. <laughs> so we just moved from horizontally scrolling or uh, auto-scrolling on a car to a platformer, but I didn't even have a jump button. Wow. We really are spoiled here on Chronological Gaming, going all over the world and playing the latest, greatest video games. I mean, if this really was 1981, I would, I would be blown away. Come on, get it. I need an R. Where's the R? It's all random when the letters show up, so you never really know what's going to happen as you pick it up. <laughs> Too cool. And we're even spelling out Universal, picking up the other enemies in the bonus round. Just like Scramble, I want to keep going to the right, and I want to see what's next. 1981 is the, the year that I, I want to keep going right, and I want to see what's next. Which is a, it's a concept that you know, we didn't think of before when we had uh, video games that were played on one screen. And then we, are, we all know what's going to happen with that. Let's just keep going right and, and continue to go right and see what happens next and just make it more and more exciting. Whoa! And someone was flying at me before I got to the bonus round. Okay, where's that R? I need that R. <laughs> I tried to go for the R and crashed. That's amazing. Wow. All right, we'll go one more shot. Put another coin in. And playing some Snapjack. Why they called it Snapjack, I'm not sure. 
possibly the name is the reason why this one's a little more obscure. <laughs> they should have called it Pac-Man Scramble. <laughs> yeah, the control's pretty cool. The, 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 the only using a joystick keeps it very simple. So uh, really easy to play, fun to play. And then the collecting dots while at the same time adjusting your legs to go up and down. It, it's, it's awesome. It's really fun. And I believe that they t took me back where I left off. So I can keep putting money in and then keep playing Snapjack. So it continues where it left off. That it leaves off. Well, I'm doing terrible at it. Not getting used to the elevation. I got to plan ahead and realize, shorten the legs before you get to the, the, the ceiling. Okay, put another coin in, push and start. We can do it. Come on. Let's go. See, so moving left and right, and then up and down just makes your legs extend. Wow, yeah, so cool. <laughs> Sorry, no jump bonus. So the jump is meant to be like a bonus round too, when you bounce from platform to platform. Sweet. And we go to the next level. Cool, now it doesn't do what we've seen with the other horizontally scrolling games and give you a heads up at the top of the screen showing you the levels you've been to. It'd be a nice touch. Oh, oh, we gotta wait till the, the bridge goes by. Okay, got it. Can we do it? Oh gosh. Wow, nice. So the mechanic now has changed to, you have to watch what the level's doing. I thought we were just gonna move to the right and then, uh, Watch out for enemies, but now you have to look at the terrain and go across the terrain while also picking up dots for points. Wow. <laughs> wow, so cool. Love it. <laughs> go, go, gadget legs. Yeah, I want to keep going. Does it save where we left off? It does. Wow, that's so cool. It's been a new concept in video games to do that. Now we get the jump bonus round. No, don't. <laughs> Does we? Yeah, we, so we lose the bonus if they kill us. I got killed by upside down houses. Again, something else I wouldn't think I'd say tonight playing video games. Can we go again? Yes, let's go. The other thing Universal's doing is the constant music or sounds in the background, keeping it lively and fun. Awesome. Wow, that's so cool. So Snapjack has elements that we've seen that were the top tier of 1981, and then they also add uh, a few things we haven't seen. Or I shouldn't say, not that we haven't seen, but combined uh, multiple things. So, uh, it, but it does it very, very well. I'm surprised that this one isn't uh, more popular because it's, I mean, it's, it's blending Pac-Man and uh, S Super Cobra or Scramble, whatever you want to call it, and putting them together and it, it works great. So of all the games we played, I'm going to say five stars. Five stars for Snapjack because I don't want to stop playing. I would like to continue to play Snapjack until I see the end. And I probably will after this. So now it's time to put our video game playing on pause. What a night. So much fun. We're going to be continuing all the releases in 1981. That's it for today. And like I always say, uh, way to go, Mr. You. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9 p.m. Central. So join us and let us know if you miss any games along the way. This video would not be possible without RetroArch and LaunchBox. Please tell your friends there's some crazy guy out there trying to play every single video game. You can always check out Chronologically Gaming on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We will catch you next time.